Hi, hey, just checking to see if you were still here or if you had actually made it here today. Welcome to Parish Prayers and Beyond. I'm Pastor Craig Beeman, and we have been looking at the fruit of the Spirit. Now, um, this is just, I, I love this. This is amazing. This is good stuff. This is stuff that you, as a Christian, need to know. Uh, and it's something I need to be reminded of. Uh, we, we looked uh, first, I believe, at love uh, and then joy. And now we're looking at another one tonight. In looking at the fruit of the Spirit, remember the very presence of Christ in the heart of a believer brings these fruits that we're talking about into a person's life. So you accept Christ into your heart and the Spirit. Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of your heart, and He brings with Him some good stuff. Okay, so uh, the, these are the, these are the fruits uh, or the fruit that He brings. Uh, this is the change that is spoken of. You know, you hear you hear someone say, "Well, uh, I knew them before they accepted Christ, and now." They're a totally different person. I mean, they're caring, they're loving, they're forgiving. These things, these traits came uh, out of their relationship with Jesus. That's what happens. Uh, and so that's what we're talking about. Uh, the person becomes a new creature or a new creation in Christ. That's what Paul calls it. Uh, so this is, this is exciting stuff. This is very interesting stuff, I think, and helpful too. Warren Wiersbe, a very noted Bible scholar, said, Life, not law, changes behavior. And as you yield to the Spirit, Christ's life is manifest in the fruit of the Spirit. What's he saying? He's saying, as you follow Jesus, as you allow Him to be in charge of your life, what happens? You begin to reflect Jesus to others. There are certain characteristics that you have when the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. And those are reflected. Those are born, if you will. Just like a tree bears fruit, well, a believer will bear the fruit of the Spirit. These things will happen. It's not something you and I have to work at or something we have to just focus on and try to make happen. It comes out of the fact that Jesus is living inside of us. And so this is exciting. Peace, peace, that's what we're talking about tonight. That's the fruit that we're going to discuss. Well, what peace is this? The form of the word in the original language helps us a bit here. The word used here is to join or bind together that which has been separated. <laughs> in other words, have you got yourself together? <laughs> Have you got everything together? And that's, that's when you have everything together, when you, when you are focused on Christ, you have His peace. Uh, so it's very interesting. John MacArthur said this. He said, uh, he wrote, The inner calm that results from confidence in one's saving relationship with Christ. He, he's saying that's what peace is. Uh, he says the verb form uh, denotes binding together, aha, uh -huh, there we go, uh, and is reflected in the expression, expression having it all together. Uh, so that's, that's, that's what we have when we have the peace of Christ. When the peace of God is with us, we've got it together. We're okay. Peace, according to the Bible knowledge commentary, says this. It defines peace as an inner repose and quietness, even in the face of adverse circumstances. It defies human understanding. This is that peace that people have when uh, things have just gone terribly wrong and they're able to make it day by day. They're able to continue to function. Their whole life, their whole world hasn't come crashing down upon them because they're able to make it. And it's that peace and it passes all understanding. We don't understand it. We don't understand how anybody can uh, walk through a very tough situation and, and come out on the other side. But it's because of the peace of God Himself. This peace is, uh, is like joy that we talked about. It's not dependent on circumstances. This peace 
as I said, is the peace that passes all understanding. It's made possible by the Holy Spirit. It is the peace of knowing that things are okay with you and God. You have been reconciled with God. You are in good standing with Him. Too many times we allow ourselves to get so caught up in a situation and we permit the situation to be more life-altering than what God did to us uh, or did, uh, did in giving us salvation. I mean, we allow a circumstance or a situation to be so big in our lives that it's bigger. We allow it to be big. Now, it's not. But we allow it to be bigger than the, the act that God did through Jesus on the cross when he offered us salvation and we received it. And so we allow situation to be bigger than that. We minimize our salvation sometimes. Maybe not on purpose, but we do. When we allow something else to be bigger, more life-changing, more life-altering than salvation itself. Sometimes... We allow those situations to overcome us all the while. And if we will step back and look at the big picture, if we will step back and look at the big picture, we will see that God's in control. God's handling it. Oh, yes, it's, it's, it, 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 we may have a horrible situation that we're experiencing. We may have this, <gasps> and my wife says, those are antlers. You grow antlers, don't you? And I said, yeah, I guess so. But those situations where we just think, oh, this is horrible. And we allow those situations to be bigger than salvation itself. We cannot do that. You and I must, must be fully aware of what God has done for us in, 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 in offering and providing for us forgiveness of sins. We must realize that, that that is more impactful to our lives than anything else could ever be. We have a peace when we're in right relationship with God. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, Paul encourages us to let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. This means this peace should be allowed to overcome whatever we face in this life. This peace, this knowledge that we've been reconciled with God ought to be more important than anything that is thrown in our life from this world. To have peace with God means there is nothing, no sin, no guilt, no condemnation that separates us. And that peace with God is only available through Christ. It is what I call being right with God, being in right relationship with Him. This world is not our home. How many times must I remind you and myself that this world is temporary? It will not last forever. So what does that mean? What does that mean? That means whatever we're going through, we're actually going through. It means it will end at some point. It's temporary. It has an end. Remember that. And as you go through that tough time, know that you have the peace of God you can lean on. On the other hand, the peace that God gives us through His Holy Spirit is eternal. It will not end. His peace in us is able to be counted on in times of trouble. Too many times, I think, uh, as I said before, I think we, we minimize our salvation as being something that God has offered and we have received and now it's all over. <laughs> Nothing could be further from the truth. When a person accepts Jesus into their heart and life has just begun, Life has just begun. It is a new day for a new creation in Christ, a, a new day. And all that happens after that is dependent upon that received salvation that God has offered and we have received. Everything is dependent on that. These fruits of the Spirit are with us and are longing to change our view of ourselves, our view of others, and our view of the world itself. Peace is not found in the absence of danger, but in the presence of God. Let me say that again. Peace is not found in the absence of danger, but in the presence of God. I want to leave you with these words from John Wesley. I know he was a Methodist, but hey, he believed in God. He was a Christian. 
Let's listen to these words. He says, I rest beneath the Almighty's shade. My griefs expire, my troubles cease. Thou, Lord, on whom my soul is stayed, will keep me still in perfect peace. The peace of God. It, 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 it passes all of our understanding because it's something we do not generate within ourselves. It's something that God generates inside of us by way of His Holy Spirit. So I pray that this has been informational, but also uh, encouraging to you as we walk, continue to walk through the fruit of the Spirit. There's, there, there are others that are listed in this uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. And so we're going to walk through each one of them. Uh, so stay tuned. Next week, we'll look at the next one. Uh, again, as always, uh, some prayer requests coming uh, and some announcements to keep in mind. Uh, so if you will, would you allow me to pray for you? Let's do that. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for my friend. Father, through the power of your Holy Spirit, you have brought into their heart. Uh, if they have trusted in you, if they have made a decision to follow you, to ask you to forgive them of their sins and to be in charge of their life, then this fruit of the Spirit, this peace is inside of my friend. And Father, I pray that they would lean on that peace and that they would experience that peace in tough times, in rough times. And Father, if my friend does not have a relationship with you, God, I'm praying for them. I'm praying that they would hear your call, hear your voice through the power of your Holy Spirit and, and understand that, yes, they've sinned against you, but they, their sins can be forgiven. All of their sins can be forgiven and, and they can give their life to you. Father, I pray that they would do that today. Lord, that they would just make that decision. They may have never made that decision. They may have been in church all their lives, but they've never made that decision to trust in you and to ask you to forgive them of their sins and to come into their life and be uh, in charge of their life. Maybe today they need to do that. Father, I pray that they would not put that decision off. Lord, we don't have time. We don't know how much time we do have. But we don't have much, it seems, at times that we don't have much left. But, Father, I pray for my friend, if they need to make that decision, that they would. Lord, we thank you for your great love and your peace that you give to us. Father, help us to lean on that peace, to focus on that, what you have done in our hearts, and realize that that's the most important thing that could ever happen to us. God, thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Parish Prayers and Beyond. Till next week, I'm Pastor Craig Beeman. Have a good one. Thank you.